Hello and welcome to Symmetron. Thank you for taking a few moments to look at our die design solution. As you see the interface over on the right hand side we have a wizard that will guide us through the process as we develop the strip and the tool forms. So you'll see how easy that is to work with. Plus it's a very intuitive interface. On the left hand side you'll see the different forms as it's being created and organized for me on the fly. So some first things we need to concern ourselves with though as we look at the part, what's going to happen with the material? Uh, how is it going to handle the different bends that are included? Uh, as you see here on our setup function, a uh, large library of different types of materials. Each of these contain the different properties that that material has, plus particulars that you may wish to include about the type of bend you're do using. This can also be used to set up design standards that will occur in the tool. Uh, affecting the different offsets of the different components as we cut the punch. So at the very beginning we basically define the process and get things set up. Okay, so like we talked about we're going to be concerned with what happens with the material. At this point I'm going to lay things out so that we can begin talking about the blank. As you know the blank is everything. It's how we begin when we start working with the uh, information. Now are we going to work with the inside material, the outside material? Maybe you're given only one side of material at the beginning. Very easily you can use either of those cases to do the blank. With the blank, we're going to figure out, again based on the material properties, how big the overall size is if this were flattened. Now, in many times, uh, many designers have had to cut sections, go through the part, measure off the lengths of all these sections, lay them out flat on a flat plane or surface and then try to map or spline the outside edge of these sections to come up with the blank. In the end they're left with what you might consider a good estimate but not necessarily an accurate blank. Here very quickly in just a few seconds hours of work have been done to give us that blank outline so that we can begin to work with it. Now we understand how much material we're using. Uh, we understand how that's going to affect the design. But even more than that, it's a question of how formable is this part. Here I've just stepped into the analysis tool where we're looking at the thickness strain or what's going to happen here as we bend this part based on material thickness. You notice you can identify individual areas with the cursor. Additionally, you can look at the safety zone analysis. Here we're looking to see how safe the part is in terms of wrinkling, or perhaps it's going to fail, it's actually going to tear. Again, all this information is up front for our quote guys to understand what's involved in the part, a good estimate of how many hits it's going to take to make it, or for that matter, if the part's not even makeable. But then even further, carrying that information on into design, that helps us to understand uh, what's going to be involved as we form the part. With that in mind, let's look at what would be involved. Uh, here we're thinking about the different stations. And as we lay out some of these different forms, uh, you'll see that basically uh, so often that it's not like one hit, but we want to come up with a number of different uh, things that are going to occur here, different stations as we uh, make this part. So I'll focus in on the end here, this particular ear of the part. And again, it's going to factor in the material. This isn't just a simple 90 degree bend. You can see it's got a kink in it, plus it's up against a wall. So it's doing something actually that's fairly involved. Uh, again, here we'll look at the uh, other end of the part. Uh, maybe I want to identify this as being what is going to be flattened. So we'll allow that to calculate. And as that lays out, again, you'll notice it's not a straight, direct easy fold over kind of bend. But very quickly we've developed that particular part of the station. Uh, and we recognize that's real world. Not everything is a perfect 90 degree box. Notice over here on the left and right side we've got more complicated bending to do. In particular on the right hand side we've got some gussets or some strengthening ribs that we're dealing with. Uh, in this case it may be a matter of wanting to modify the part somewhat to make the bend correctly. Uh, I'll just simply highlight these areas that we don't want to include in our calculation and ask the system to remove them. Uh, with that comes in mind that the system is a very robust modeling system. It's a hybrid environment which means it allows you to do uh, very complicated 
surfacing and solid techniques very easily just by the pick of the button that you see here and you can switch back and forth it's not like you're consigned to any one thing or another that's something that we really want to stress about the environment here you might think of it as a free form environment there are no rules limiting me as to what I do next or where I position things it's all a matter of what needs to be done and getting it done in time here I'm going to bend this uh, particular side up and since it's a nice straight bend I'll use the functionality for that but with that it can direct it to a certain angle or change the radius because perhaps I need to overbend it in the case of some swing back conditions or maybe I need to increase the radius because I'm going to come back and strike it again let's just flatten it all the way out you notice it's brought the geometry attached to it with it and brought it into correct position we'll finish the side now by flattening out that ear and then that's going to draw it again to a direct blank for us, as you see. All right, now for the more complicated side. Uh, again, we want to bring it to this plane. We want to grab all these faces. However, these extrusions we want to keep. We want to bring those into their correct position, but have everything else flattened. So again, going through the analysis, we see in just a few seconds, it's given us the desired results. Now at that point we may decide to go back and say let's look at the blank again. Let's regenerate that blank outer edge and see what it looks like now off of these flattened faces. I still have the rib and I still have the extrusions that will change the overall size but I'm going to get a much more accurate blank because I have carefully unfolded each station along the way. So we see a lot of things taking place. It's all about getting things accurate. It's about not guessing but doing things quickly because of the amount of time, uh, the shortness of time we have for delivery. So there we've got the blank established and we've got our major uh, stations established.